Hey guys, in today's micro lecture, we're going to talk about anxiety attacks or panic attacks or anxiety disorders, whichever one you want to call it. Now, you are going to be called to somebody who's experiencing an anxiety disorder or anxiety attack at some point in your career. Now, there's currently little known about the actual triggers. Now, we, we, we do know that in the literature that there's different generalized causes such as um, anxiety or maybe depression and other psychopathies, um, some types of brain lesions and head injuries, but the actual trigger is still unknown from a very specific cellular viewpoint. We don't know why um, you, there is this imbalance between the, the, the respiratory gases. When you arrive on scene at somebody having an anxiety disorder, it's so important that you have a general level of understanding and not immediately go in to judge the patient. Now, typically, you're going to, you're going to be spending time going to people who are younger, you know, people in their early 20s, a female. Um, now, just because you're, you're attending that, that demographic, it doesn't mean, you know, they've called you. They've called triple zero because they can't control their breathing. And on many occasions, they actually will leave it till the very last minute before calling you. Now, regardless of the demographic or the cause or the age or the gender, as the paramedic, it really is your role to go in with, without prejudging and to have a level of understanding that allows you to effectively treat that patient with lots of reassurance, lots of communication, um, because that's what this, is, this patient is going to require. What you also have to understand is that anybody who's hyperventilating, in other words, tachypneic, lots of breath, breathing fast, they are going to eventually end up with a state of metabolic and respiratory alkalosis. Now that might mean a, not mean a lot to you, but when we're talking about the acid-base balance, the blood must be maintained at a, at a being between 7.35 and 7.45. In other words, breathing fast is not gonna do the, the acid levels in your blood very good. It's gonna blow it off and make it alkaline. So the CO2 will all be blown off um, and you'll end up with an alk state of alkalosis, which was actually very, very toxic and put you in, into cardiac arrest. So the key messages at this point are to have a level of understanding, communicate with your patient, and to not prejudge. Now, when you're treating this patient, we used to tell our patients to breathe into brown paper bags so they can breathe their own CO2. Paramedics were, were well-placed to give your patient an oxygen mask to breathe into these, the, this as well, but that doesn't happen anymore, it shouldn't happen. Instead, what you need to be doing is coaching the breathing by being assertive with your patient by saying, you need to listen to me, try and slow your breathing down, we're gonna do this together. What I found has been effective before in the past is tactile communication, a hand on the shoulder, telling your patient to take a nice deep breath in through the nose, holding it for three seconds, one, two, three, and out through the mouth, and repeating that for approximately 10 times. So that's a micro lecture on, um, on ventilations, hyperventilations. My name's Sam Willis. Uh, it's been great talking to you and I look forward to talking to you again shortly, guys.